Hello students. Today in the unit 2.0 AC circuits, we will understand about mathematical and phasor representation of alternating currents. Myself, Chandrasekhar S. Patil, Sharad Institute of Technology, Polytechnic, Yadra. The contents of this presentations are equations of alternating voltages and currents, effective or RMS value of sinusoidal current or voltage, average value of sinusoidal voltage or current, peak factor, form factor and we will conclude with these important terms. Equations of alternating voltages and currents, we here you will understand about what is a alternating voltage and current and how is it represented in the form of equations. Effective or RMS value of sinusoidal current or voltage. The alternating current which is in the form of sinusoidal current or voltage form, we have to calculate the effective RMS value means root mean square value of the particular sinusoidal waveform. Average value of sinusoidal voltage or current whatever the average value we are going to find out how is the for different currents what is the average value of that particular circuit we have to understand then we will understand about peak factor and form factor which are the ratios of some two quantities equations of alternating voltages and current we have seen in the previous presentation that when the single turn rectangular armature coil of an elementary alternator rotates at constant angular velocity in a uniform magnetic field, an alternating EMF is induced in it which follows a sign curve. So in the previous presentations we have understood how the alternating EMF is generated and how is it represented represented in the form of sine wave. We have seen that in the previous presentation a single rectangular single turn rectangular coil of elementary alternator rotates in, in a uniform magnetic field because of the cutting of the magnetic flux because of the relative motion between the coil and the magnetic flux the EMF is induced in the coil. An alternating EMF is induced and in which follows a sine curve and it is like a sine curve. Now let us derive the mathematical equation to represent such an EMF. So whatever as per the Faraday's law, whatever we are finding out the EMF generated that we have to represent in the form of mathematical equations. For that purpose, let us consider B that is the capital B equal to flux density of the magnetic field in Tesla's. So B is the magnetic flux density in Tesla. L is the active length of each conductor in meters. So B is the magnetic flux. How many lines of flux are passing through a particular unit area that is called as flux density and flux density of the magnetic field is indicated or it is shown in the units of Tesla's. L is equal to active length of each conductor in meters. So what is the active length of the conductors in meters that is represented with the form of L, small l. R is equal to radius of circular path traced out by the conductors in meters. So what is R? It is the radius of circular path. It is the radius of circular path traced out by the conductors in meters. So how much effective radius comes in contact with the magnetic flux that is called as R and there is radius of circular path traced out by the conductor in meters. Omega angular velocity of the coil in radians per second. At what speed the there is a relative motion between the coil and the magnetic flux but at what speed it is rotating at an angle that is called as omega angular velocity of the coil in radians per second. 
so we have to represent the angle between the coil in the radians per second v is equal to linear velocity of the coil sides in meters per second v is called as the linear velocity of the coil sides so what is the linear waveform linear uh, motion of the coil sides in meters per second that is given by r omega recon time for from the instant when the coil lies in the plane of reference y o y has y o y means star delta star uh, and has a zero emf y o y uh, angle turned through by the coil is in t seconds will be given by phi is equal to omega t so here in the the coil lies in the reference of y o y and has zero emf so if the coil is in parallel direction to the it is if it is moving in parallel to the magnetic flux flowing through from north pole to south pole if the coil rotates in parallel to that direction then there is zero emf induced in the coil but if it rotates at an angle that is called as theta equal to omega t figure shows the coil ab after it has rotated through this angle theta at this instant the peripheral velocity of each coil side can be resolved into two components one perpendicular and other parallel to the direction of magnetic flux as shown in the figure so here the coil ab is the uh, coil which is rotating in the magnetic flux and at, at an angle of theta so the figure shows the coil ab and it has rotated at an angle of theta so there are two lines of uh, there are two components here okay peripheral velocity of each coil side can be resolved into two components what is the peripheral velocity of the coil yeah, that can be reduced into two components that is perpendicular and other parallel to the direction of magnetic flux as shown in the figure so as we have discussed earlier if the magnetic flux or the peripheral velocity of each coil is in parallel to the magnetic flux then no emf is induced in it however if the coil ab peripheral velocity of each coil ab resolve in uh, it if it rotates in the form perpendicular to the lines of magnetic flux then maximum emf is induced in it so here in the figure we can see there is a north pole and south pole and a coil ab is placed between the magnetic flux that is north pole and south pole at an angle of theta the linear per, uh, peripheral velocity of the each coil varies if the uh, the we have to analyze the perpendicular velocity and the par par parallel if it is moving in the parallel direction what is the magnetic flux or what is the emf induced the emf generated in each coil side is entirely due to the component v sin theta of the velocity perpendicular to the magnetic field therefore it follows that any at any instant emf generated in each coil side equal to b l v sin theta force so the emf generated in each coil side is entirely due to the component v sin theta so if the theta angle is in perpendicular to the lines of magnetic flux maximum emf is induced in it so v sin theta is the deciding factor of how much emf is induced in the coil single turn coil or uh, <coughs> ab coil what is the coil ab how much emf it is induced in the coil due to the relative motion between the coil and the magnetic flux then the emf induced is directly proportional to v sin theta 
EMF generated in each coil side. So if we have number of turns in AB, then in each coil side, the EMF generated is given by BLB sin theta volts. Total EMF generated in the coil E equal to 2 into BLV sin theta volts. So the total EMF generated in the coil because we have two lines of uh, two lines of coil. One is one A A side and B side. So we have EMF generated in each coil side is BLV sin theta volts, and we have two coil sides. So because of that, we have total EMF generated in the coil equal to two BLV sin theta volts. So here you can see there is an angle theta which is shown in the diagram theta v cos theta and v sin theta. So v is the EMF induced in the coil AB one side coil. So that is directly proportional or equal to VLV sin theta volts. So similarly total EMF generated in the coil E equal to 2 BLV sin theta volts. When theta is equal to 90 degree, the coil will be in the horizontal plane and both the conductors A and B will cut the magnetic flux at a maximum rate. Naturally, EMF in this position of the coil will reach its maximum value EM from the previous equation we can write EM equal to 2 BLB volts because sin theta is equal to 1. When theta is equal to 90 degree we know sin of 90 degree is 1 unity. The coil will be in the horizontal plane and both the conductors A and B will cut the magnetic flux at a maximum rate. So as I have told you, the angle theta if it is 90 degree or the lines of force cutting the magnetic flux or the line of uh, coil if it is in perpendicular direction to the magnetic flux maximum flux is cut and due to the relative motion maximum flux is cut and an EMF is induced in it and both the conductors A and B will cut the magnetic flux at a maximum rate. It will, they will cut at a maximum rate. Naturally EMF in this position of the coil will reach its maximum value EM. From the previous equation we can write as EM equal to 2 BLV volts. Since sin theta equal to 1. So whatever EMF is induced in the coil that is 2 BLV volts because we are in perpendicular to the at a particular instant when the coil is at an angle 90 degree to the magnetic flux at that point of time EM equal to 2 BLV volts. Above equation can be written in different forms E equal to EM sin theta that is equal to EM sin omega t that is equal to EM sin of 2 pi f t. So f we have the f is nothing but the inverse of time EM equal to sin 2 pi small t by capital T. The instantaneous value of sinusoidal alternating current set up by the above EMF can be also be expressed by similar equations. I is equal to I m sin theta, I m equal to I m sin omega t equal to I m sin 2 pi f t equal to I m sin 2 pi t by t. So at particular instant when theta is equal to 90 degree the line the <coughs> coil AB is in perpendicular to the magnetic flux then E equal to EM sin theta that is nothing but EM sin omega t theta is nothing but omega t angular velocity into time EM equal to 2 pi f into t 
at what velocity it is rotating what is the frequency of that uh, omega is nothing but 2 pi f into now we are multiplying em equal to em into sin 2 pi f t so em equal to sin 2 pi t by t because f is nothing but the inverse of time the instantaneous value of sinusoidal alternating current set up by the above emf can also be expressed by similar equations i is equal to i m sin theta i m sin omega t i m sin to 2 pi f t whatever emf is generated similarly i can the current i instantaneous value of sinusoidal alternating current set up by the above emf is also given by the equation i is equal to i m sin theta equal to i m sin omega t equal to i m sin 2 pi f t equal to i m sin 2 pi t by t. Next we will understand about how to calculate the effective or RMS value of sinusoidal current or voltage. Since we know that we have understood in the previous presentation the magnetic flux is cut maximum if it is in perpendicular to the magnetic flux direction the line of uh, the line of the coil is in perpendicular to the lines of magnetic flux perpendicular to the magnetic, lines of magnetic flux so we have represented the emf generated in an alternator by a sinusoidal waveform so it gradually varies reaches to the peak then it comes down to zero value again it in the diverse direction it goes to the peak value and comes to zero. So how actually this happens we have understood in the previous slides or in the previous presentations. The magnitude of an alternating current varies from instant to instant. So for every instant the magnitude of alternating current varies from point to point or from time to time or from instant to instant. Whereas the magnitude of direct current remains constant with respect to time. In case of alternating EMF or current, we have the magnitude of direct current remains constant whereas the alternating current changes from instant to instant. So for this purpose, we need to know RFS value of sinusoidal current or voltage in, phase, in case of alternating quantities or in case of alternating currents and voltages. Therefore, we need a common measure to judge the relative effectiveness of the two current in performing useful functions. Such a measure may be developed by, from the considerations of the effects produced by the two currents. One such effect is heating in resistance. Based on this, the effective or RMS value of an alternating current is defined as follows. So, by the alternating current, how much EMF is there at particular instant and RMS value is the how much heating effect it creates because of the flow of current through the coil, heating coil. Based on this, effective or RMS value of an alternating current is defined as follows. The effective or RMS value of an alternating current is given by that direct current which flows when flowing through a given circuit for a given time produces the same amount of heat as produced by the alternating current when flowing through the same circuit for the same time. So the effective or RMS value of an alternating current is given by that direct current it is equal to that amount of direct current which when flowing through a given circuit for a given time produces the same amount of heat as produced by the alternating current when flowing through the same circuit for the same time. So how much heat is produced by the direct current for the same amount of heat uh, for the same amount of heat produced by the alternating current when flowing through the same circuit for same time. If the if we apply direct current to a coil, how much heat is produced? And if you apply alternating current to the coil, how much heat is produced? 
so it is uh, the rms value is that amount of heat produced by the direct current for the same instant of time uh, where uh, to how much the uh, alternating current is applied so what is the amount of heat produced that is given by rms value of sinusoidal current or voltage average value of sinusoidal voltage or current so now we have understood by the he the heating effect indicates the rms value of the alternating current or voltage if the some amount of direct current is applied to the circuit for a given point uh, uh, time time stamps so if the same alternating current is applied so how much heat is produced by the direct current for the same instant of time that is called as rms value of the sinusoidal voltage or current similarly average value of sinusoidal voltage or current for sinusoidal current or voltage average value is that value which is obtained by averaging all the instantaneous values of its wave over a period of half cycle so our average value is nothing but the average of the instantaneous values of the wave over a period of half cycle for such a current or voltage the two half cycles being exactly similar average value over a complete cycle is zero hence a period of half cycle only is considered for obtaining the average value so for such a current or voltage the two half cycles being exactly similar average value over a complete cycle is zero hence a period of half cycle obtain only is considered for obtaining the average value so if you want to find the average value of a particular alternating current or voltage for only half cycle is considered and the average of voltages or currents at particular every instant that is given the, called as the average value similarly to rms voltage average value for sinusoidal current or voltage can be found out by either graphical or analytical method by graphical method what is the average value of the current over half a cycle i a v i average equal to i1 plus i2 plus so on up to i n divided by n for n instant instants for every single instant what is the current the average of those currents is called as the average value of that current over a half cycle similarly for a sinusoidal voltage v average equal to v1 plus v2 plus so on up to vn divided by n analytical method i average equal to 0.637 im so whatever the instantaneous values graphical method indicates the average value as the average of all the instantaneous voltages or currents whereas in analytical method i average equal to 0.637 i maximum thus for sinusoidal current average value is 0.637 times its maximum value so average value of the current of sinusoidal voltage or current is given by 0.637 im peak factor what is peak factor now we have to understand what is a peak factor it is defined as the ratio of maximum value of alternating quantity to its rms value this factor is also sometimes called as crest factor or amplitude factor so peak factor is defined as the ratio of maximum value of an alternating current to its rms value it is also called as crest factor or amplitude factor for sinusoidal current or voltage peak factor equal to maximum value divided by rms value so for a particular sinusoidal voltage or current what is the maximum peak value divided by the rms value of that current or voltage gives the ratio of maximum value divided by peak rms value gives the peak factor that is nothing but maximum value divided by 0.707 into maximum value that is equal to 1.414 peak factor is always given as 1.414 by the above calculations 
Its knowledge is useful in the applications like insulation, testing and measurement of iron losses. So peak factor is very much important in finding out the insulation testing and measurement of iron losses in a particular coin. Form factor. The average ratio of RMS value to average value is called the form factor of an alternating quantity. For sinusoidal current or voltage, form factor equal to RMS value divided by average value. There is nothing but 0.707 into maximum value divided by 0.637 into maximum value. That is nothing but 1.11. So what is the form factor? It is the ratio of RMS value divided by average value. RMS value is nothing but 0.707 into maximum value whereas average value equal to 0.637 into maximum value. The knowledge of this factor helps in determining the RMS value of an alternating quantity from its average value and vice versa. So the because of the RMS value, the knowledge of this factor helps in determining the RMS value of an alternating quantity from its average value and vice versa. So we, we can find out what is the average value, what is the RMS value by with the help of form factor. So here there are two points, peak factor and form factor. Peak factor of the particular coil is nothing, particular sinusoidal waveform is nothing but maximum value divided by RMS value. Okay. So maximum value divided by 0.707 into maximum value that is nothing but 1.414. The ideal peak factor of a sinusoidal current or voltage is nothing but 1.414. So with this reference, it helps us in the applications like insulation testing and measurement of iron losses. Iron losses and hysteresis losses and insulating testing of the particular EMF, particular uh, applications we can find out with the help of peak factor. Similarly, we have form factor. The, re, the form of RMS value to average value is called the form factor of an alternating quantity. For sinusoidal current or voltage, form factor is equal to RMS value divided by average value. That is nothing but 0.707 into maximum value divided by 0.637 into maximum value. That is given by 1.11. Always the ideal condition ideal value of form factor is 1.11 with this help we can find the rms value of an alternating current from its average value and vice versa so with the help of form factor we can find the average value and rms value any one quantity if we know other quantity so this is the advantage of form factor and for the peak factor the advantage is because of the help in the applications of insulation testing and measurement of iron losses. Similarly, we have understood about average value of sinusoidal voltage or current. Then RMS value we have understood. What is the RMS value of current or voltage? Okay. Is the, what is the RMS value? RMS value is the amount of heat generated by the direct current for a particular amount of time. If alternating current is applied for a particular amount of time for a particular coil, how much heat is generated and how if the uh, direct current is applied for the same amount of time, then what is the amount of heat generated? That is the RMS value of sinusoidal current or voltage. Similarly, we have represented the equation of EMF induced that is VLV sin theta volts. Similarly, I equal to IM sin theta equal to im sin omega t emf and current they are all of the same nature but the the two components were emf and current so they are represented by the same type of equations so with this we have understood what is rms value average value and peak factor form factor and many more things so 
in the next chapter we'll in the next presentation we'll go in detail about mathematical and phasor representations what is power factor and all we'll understand so with this i i conclude that uh, how for the powering presentation what is the mathematical representation of alternating current voltages